Philip Paul Bliss was one of the great hymn writers of the 1800s. He was responsible for writing several of the hymns that we hold dear. Hymns like Let the Lower Lights Be Burning, Hold the Fort, Wonderful Words of Life, and My Redeemer. He also wrote music to other hymns such as It Is Well With My Soul. This is the P.P. Bliss Museum. It's located in Rome, Pennsylvania, and it's one of the homes that were owned by P.P. Uh, and Lucy Bliss before their death in 1876. P.P. Bliss was born on July 9th, 1838, uh, not far from this place. This is in Rome, Pennsylvania, and this is the house that belonged to P.P. and Lucy Bliss and was used for their parents quite often. Um, it is possibly the place where they stayed when they were uh, here for the Christmas holiday in 1876, just before their death. Uh, it may be the location where uh, they sat and P.P. Uh, Bliss composed the words to the song, My Redeemer. Uh, this is the town where P.P. Uh, uh, Bliss uh, grew up and uh, lived a portion of his life. Uh, he was here as a young man. Uh, he, when he was 10 years old, uh, he was walking down the street carrying some vegetables and happened upon a house that uh, he heard music coming out of. And it was a young lady playing a piano and he had never heard a piano before. And so he wandered in, uh, not thinking about where he was or what he was doing, just in, in completely enchanted by the music. He went in and listened to her play, and as she finished, he broke into applause, and she turned around startled and chased him out of the house saying, get out of here with your bare feet. And uh, he didn't know he was trespassing, he just was overcome with the music, and music became such an important part of his life from that point onwards. And he began composing music, he was a music teacher. Um, all of this was, uh, his life's work is composing music uh, to please the Savior. He also composed some secular music as well, but uh, it was the, uh, his hymns and spiritual songs that he is best known for. Uh, later on in his life, uh, he became even better known. He was a uh, very well-known music teacher, uh, an itinerant teacher. He would travel around teaching seminars and, and helping people uh, learn music and he caught the attention of D.L. Moody, who invited him, P.P. Bliss, to go over to England with him for a campaign that he was doing there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Bliss turned him down and said that uh, he was doing important work here in America and didn't want to leave that. And so instead of P.P. Uh, Bliss, uh, Moody took Ira Sankey with him, and that's how uh, they became known, and Ira Sankey became famous as working with Moody. Uh, it could have been P.P. Bliss and uh, D.L. Moody that were known, instead of Ira Sankey being one that was well known. But um, when Moody came back to America and began working in Chicago, uh, preaching there, uh, he did call upon P.P. Bliss, who went to help him uh, on multiple occasions, and in fact, uh, on the occasion of his death, uh, it was actually, he had been working in Chicago with Moody and he had come back to Rome, Pennsylvania to this location to visit family. Uh, he had two young sons that were staying with family here and he had come back to spend Christmas, the holidays with them and uh, was traveling back on December 29th 1876. Uh, he was traveling back uh, to Chicago when they had their terrible accident that cost them their lives. Uh, he and Lucy both perished in Ashtabula, Ohio in a train wreck that occurred there. P.P. Bliss is uh, best known for the songs that he's written. Uh, there are many that uh, are to his credit. Uh, some of them you may know, Almost Persuaded, Dare to be a Daniel, Hallelujah, Tis Done, Hallelujah, what a savior. Hold the fort. Jesus loves even me. Let the lower lights be burning. Once for all, the light of the world is Jesus. Whosoever will, and wonderful words of life. 
Those are some of his uh, better known songs. He's also responsible for writing the music, composing the music for uh, three, three different songs in particular. I gave my life for thee. It is well with my soul and precious promise. But perhaps his best known song is My Redeemer, which was the song that was found in the uh, trunk that had been placed on an incorrect train and survived that train crash that, that cost P.P. Bliss and his wife uh, their lives. Uh, that song, My Redeemer, is, uh, it was written perhaps in this very house uh, and it was during his Christmas vacation at, before he went back to Chicago. So P.P. Bliss, uh, we need to remember him, we need to remember his legacy, and uh, was saved at the age of uh, 12 years old in 1850, uh, became a member of the Cherry Flats Baptist Church, and uh, then went on to serve the Lord. Uh, he was, uh, his theologically, he was ecumenical, he was involved in Methodist meetings, he was involved in uh, uh, congregational meetings. In fact, at the time of his death, he was a member of a congregational church. However, his music has been very important in fundamental Baptist churches. Uh, it has been very important in many traditional churches. Those that hold to the old hymns, they use many of uh, the songs written by P.P. P. Bliss, uh, either the songs or the music are, were written by him. And so he's very important to our history and our heritage. So we need to remember him, uh, especially in these days where music tends to be very shallow, very entertainment oriented. His music was music that truly prepared the heart of the believer uh, for uh, worshiping God. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Somebody came along and said that uh, this isn't good enough anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, the world's changed, so we need to change everything. And I think there's a little bit of uh, there's a lot of things happen. I think pragmatism is a big part of that, which it's just you know we're trying to rethink worship and 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 in order to rethink worship, you have to you have to change the whole idea of what worship is, and and really worship is for the Lord, not for us. That's right. And, you know, P.P. Bliss and Fanny Crosby and all those people, they had it right. And, right. and God used the, all these, these hymns were born out of revival, real revival. And, um, and they're saying, well, God, we don't want to give you that anymore. Here's what we want to give you now. Mm -hmm. And they're saying God likes it. He loves it. And, and I, I, I'm not convinced that he does. And I think that's a dangerous game that they're playing with all that. So Yeah, there's a great deal of difference between the songs that they wrote and what is being produced today. In my opinion, uh, what's produced today is much more shallow, much more emotional mm -hmm. rather than doctrinal. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, would you would you agree with that? Uh, any comments on that? Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I think it's all it thinks all emotional. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was talking to somebody today about uh, intellect, emotion, will, and uh, it, it ought to all truth, a sermon, a song, whatever, should have some sort of intellectual appeal to it. It ought to say something. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm amazed at these old hymns, the masterful rhyme and meter that they have. Uh, John Wesley, or I believe it's Charles Wesley, uh, and Can It Be, uh, my chains fell off, my, I, my heart was set free, I rose, went forth, and followed thee. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, hast died for me? The, you know, you compare that to these average ditties in these average churches. Yeah, like, okay, right. so it's not intelligent music. And the second of all, it's not even, it, it's all emotion. Ooh, ah, uh, ooh, ah. Uh, yeah. and, and there's no, that's not theology. 
you know, no. I, I get emotional about the Lord. There's nothing wrong with getting emotional about the Lord. Absolutely. But that ought to be born in some sort of intellectual truth, <laughs> you know, not just, I just feel good about feeling good about feeling good about God. Mm-hmm. And that's really what they're doing. Right. And uh, forgive my sarcastic way of you know, putting that, but uh, <laughs> well, that's that's what they're doing. It's it's And that know, emotion, when, when emotion is just unbridled like that it can be directed in any direction and yes. it's uh you know today it's directed towards god but you know where is it going to be tomorrow there there's no depth to it there's no you know i believe this about god because of this yes. where they had that in those old songs those old hymns and yeah. that that to a large degree has been lost yes behind me is the ashtabula river in 1876 pp bliss and his wife had traveled home to rome pennsylvania to uh, be with family for the for the holidays. They had gone to visit their two sons who were staying with family there in uh, Pennsylvania and they were heading back to Chicago to continue their work with D.L. Moody. Uh, as they were traveling on December 29th, 1876, uh, they had left Rome, New York where the train had stopped for repairs overnight and they were continuing on into uh, Ohio and they were crossing the Ashtabula River uh, when the train trestle collapsed. Uh, the train plunged into the ravine below, uh, killing many people instantly. Uh, the train cars at that time were made of wood and contained potbelly stoves, which immediately caused uh, the remains of the train to burst into flames, and they both perished in the flames. It was thought that all of their belongings also were destroyed in, in the fire. Uh, however, a week later it was discovered that one of their trunks had been placed on an incorrect train and uh, had survived the disaster. Inside that trunk were, were found the words to a song that P.P. Bliss had written over his Christmas holidays uh, that uh, if it had been placed on the correct train, we would never know about this song. That song is My Redeemer, which is a song that has been a blessing to churches and to individuals for many, many uh, years, um, over a hundred years now. And uh, that song, he had written it over his Christmas break with the intention of perhaps singing it or having the congregation sing it uh, upon his return to Chicago, uh, but he never had the opportunity because he went to be with the Lord before that time. Uh, but praise God, the Lord chose fit to, um, saw fit to preserve that song for us and not have it destroyed in the flames. Uh, P.P. Bliss spent his life serving the Lord. Uh, he and Lucy both served the Lord faithfully, and their music is a testimony to how they lived and what they believed. The music, the traditional music of um, uh, the 1800s, uh, oftentimes focused on, uh, on our service to the Lord and our relationship with the Lord and, and many of the truths of scripture and real doctrine that uh, we need to remember as well. Uh, that's why it's so important that we uh, continue on with these old hymns and old songs, that uh, the spiritual songs that they produced. Uh, today's music, contemporary music, has a tendency to be very shallow. Uh, doctrinally, it, it, there isn't a lot of good doctrine in the songs. Uh, it tends to be focused on emotions and on entertainment value more than uh, the spiritual value of what, what is being taught there. Um, the old songs, songs like P.P. Bliss, uh, uh, they were focused on getting the believer into the right spirit for coming before the Lord and worshiping the Lord. Uh, whereas today it's more of an emotional high where, where people are just uh, encouraged to just feel uh, something about the Lord. But it's important that we know something about him. It's important that we know Jesus Christ as, his, as our personal savior as well. And that's what his music was about. So it's important uh, that we remember his music and that we remember the man and his testimony, both him and his wife. And um, we're just thankful, even though uh, this is the place or very near the place where, where they perished, where they went to be with the Lord, uh, we're thankful for the life and testimony that they held.